Hello everyone. I've had a couple of requests to do a video on weaning and SBT, uh, spontaneous breathing trials. So here it is as drilled down as I can possibly make is make it and focused on the MBRC exams. Okay. So one of the things when we're talking about weaning or ventilator discontinuation, the newest terminology being liberation from the machine is you really need to think about this in three different phases. The first is the pre-weaning phase. Pre-weaning is where we assess the patient to make sure they're strong enough and ready enough to be removed from the machine. Then there is the weaning phase where we actually decrease their ventilatory support. And then once we know they can breathe completely on their own, we then have to assess the airway for extubation. So three phases, pre-weaning, which is assessment, weaning, which is actually weaning, and then extubation is removing the tube. All right, so this is about as drilled down as I can get. When you're in the pre-weaning phase, you need to assess that patient to make sure they're ready to wean. And some of the main things we're gonna assess are their ventilation status, their oxygenation status, and there's some other values that we can look at. So ventilation wise, this is where we do the so-called weaning parameters, okay? Now again, weaning parameters should be done before we ever wean. We need to know that the patient is strong enough. So when we're looking at a blood gas and we're assessing ventilation, that pH should be greater than 7.30 with a CO2 less than 50. Now understanding this is not chronic COPD, all right? Respiratory rate should be less than 35. Spontaneous tidal volume should be greater than five mLs per kilo. Minute volume should be less than 10 liters per minute. Vital capacity greater than 10 mLs per kilo. MIP, which is inspiratory muscle strength, should be at least negative 20, but we'd like it a little bit more negative, you know, negative 40, negative 60. Rapid shallow breathing index should be less than 105. And the dead space to tidal volume ratio, which is the percent of tidal volume um, that's participating in gas exchange or not participating in gas exchange should be less than 60, all right? From an oxygenation standpoint, the patient needs to be on less than 50% and a peak less than 10 with a PaO2 greater than 60. Other things we can look at, SATs greater than 90, mixed venous oxygen saturations greater than 60, PF ratio, people forget to look at PF ratio, but that should be greater than 200. If we're gonna use A to A difference on 100%, it needs to be less than 350, and the physiologic shunt should be less than 20%. Other things you can assess during the pre-weaning phase, static compliance, that's a biggie, okay? We gotta know whatever restrictive lung disease that might have placed them on the vent has reversed themselves, so that static compliance needs to be greater than 25. There is something called a crop score that should be greater than 13 and a P.1 less than six, all right? So what you assess and you meet these parameters, then you're ready to actually start weaning the machine from the patient, okay? So weaning methods, there's two main ones. There, there are more, okay? But I'm gonna focus on the two biggies, a spontaneous breathing trial and SIMV weaning, okay? So this slide is for uh, SBTs. Testing purposes, SBTs are for patients that are likely to be weaned rapidly, meaning whatever put them on the vent, the problem's corrected itself within less than 72 hours. They have great weaning parameters and good results on a spontaneous breathing trial. And what do we mean by that? Well, we mean either place them on a T-bar, take them completely off the vent and put them on a T-bar, or put them on um, low levels of pressure support or CPAP. And this varies by institutional protocols. So you can actually keep them on the vent with a pressure support of zero and a CPAP of zero and let them use completely their own muscle strength to drag through all that tubing. You can do that. Or you can be a little bit nicer and maybe add just a little bit of pressure support to overcome that resistance of the tubing. Okay, a lot of institutions use a CPAP of five and a pressure support of five during their spontaneous breathing trials. But basically, if they can support themselves 30 minutes to 120 minutes or up to two hours, and they pass their weaning phase, then, then it's a good 
there's a very good likelihood they they can go ahead and stay off the vent. They're sustaining ventilation, and as long as they can protect their airway, you can leave. So these are your parameters for your SBT. Now, people that require a little bit more of a strategy of weaning, these would be like your more ventilator-dependent patients, maybe with chronic disease states like COPD. They're hard to wean. So those type of people may need an SIMV wean. This is where we gradually reduce the rate on the machine and hopefully the patient gradually increasing their drive to breathe, okay? So a lot of times that, that decreasing of the respiratory rate on the machine is done in steps of two. So if you start out with a respiratory rate of 12, you know, they pass their pre-weaning phase, uh, you're starting out with an SIMV of 12, then you can step that down to 10 if they're doing well down to eight. So a progressive downward step by two breaths a minute. Now the bad thing about SIMV, if you're using just SIMV alone, this often stalls at a rate of two to four breaths per minute. Um, the patient may fatigue here, they may go into respiratory acidosis, because if you're not using pressure support, they've got a lot of drag on that artificial airway, okay? That, that ET tube increases their work for breathing. So <coughs> you can use pressure support on these patients. When you set pressure support, you wanna make sure that spontaneous tidal line is about five to eight mLs per kilo. So you set your pressure support so they're, they're getting a normal spontaneous tidal volume. So again, this is suitable for COPD patients or those that have been on the vent for an exterior period. So whether you use SVTs or SINV weans, you are definitely going to want to monitor the patient while you're weaning them. So these are things that you can expect to change, but these are things that if you see these changes, you need to put them back on the vent, okay? So deleterious changes, bad changes, okay? So if their overall respiratory rate's greater than 35, that's a big deal. Large increases or decreases in minute volume. If we go from a minute volume to eight to a minute volume of 16, that's bad. If we go from a minute volume to eight to a minute volume of two, that's bad. Large, large swings. The SATs drop less than 90, if the PaO2 drops less than 60, if the CO2 increases by more than 10 millimeters of mercury and the pH drops less than 7.3. If they have increased accessory muscle usage during the weaning, that's typically a bad sign. If the heart rate increases, um, it can increase 15 to 20 beats per minute, but if we have greater than 20 to 140 and it's persistent, they're failing that wean. Um, so wide swing in your blood pressure if it drops or if it elevates. And then if they have an abrupt change in mental status from where they started out, that's going to be bad also. So we are going to need to know how to monitor what the expected change is and what bad changes are so that they go back on the vent. All right, last slide. So you've done your pre-weaning phase, that they've passed all the weaning parameters. You've done your weaning phase, and let's say they've done glorious, they're supporting themselves. Now you can enter the potential extubation phase. So let me just say this, weaning itself, weaning ends when that patient can sustain adequate ventilation without mechanical assistance, like they're done with the vent, but that tube is still in place. Weaning and extubation are two completely different processes and we should not pair them together, okay? Once we're weaned and that patient doesn't need the vent anymore, that doesn't mean we're good to pull the tube. Even if they pass the weaning parameters, that does not mean that we're good to pull the tube, okay? Weaning parameter tells us nothing about their ability to protect their airway. That is what the... the um, reflexes are, that they have parietal reflex, cough reflex, and that they have an adequate cuff leak test. All tubes, from neonates to adults, all tubes should leak before you pull them out. Okay, so if you have more than a 15% leak on that tube prior to excavation, that means that upper airway should stay patent when you remove that tube. Okay, so the cuff leak test of greater than 15% is gonna be really important. Okay, so there was your weaning and SBT, down and dirty. If you have any questions, just message me. Hope this has helped. See you soon.